you're, you're live. Great. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Podcast Sepas, uh, brought to you by All in Education. Uh, today, I'm honored to be joined by a friend of mine, Alejandra. Uh, Alejandra is a hairstylist in Phoenix. Uh, she has two boys, and she is navigating the crazy world of not only a global pandemic, but also raising two boys who are on the verge of being teenagers, who are in public education here on the stage, and everything that comes with uh, with that. So Alejandra, welcome to Pakistan Sepas. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Of course. Of course. Um, so Alejandra, you and I have known each other for a couple of years now. Maybe I, I honestly have lost track, um, yeah. but um, you cut my hair. And so <laughs> this is where, you know, this gets done every two weeks. Um, but I think that over, over um, time, you and I, you know, we really have, I think a lot of the time we've been talking about your boys, your two boys. And um, you and, and everything that they bring, you know, the joys, the struggles, everything. And um, they've introduced me to a lot of pop culture. And so I credit them with, um, you know, making me a little bit cool. Uh, but I think more than all of that, there's this um, uh, education piece and the experiences they go through. And so I, I want to talk today a little bit about um, your your um, your experiences of bringing them, um, the edu education um, that, that you hope that they're receiving. And a little bit about your background and why it's so important to you. And so, uh, how about if you don't mind telling us a little bit about yourself? Uh, where are you from? Where did you go to school? I'm from. I was. I'm from Santa Cruz, California, but my family brought me out here when I was four. And I went to. Um, i all my schools have been in the Alhambra district, so I went to Alhambra naturally, <laughs> and then. Oh, nice, from nice. Yeah, and then from there, I just went to beauty school. That was my thing. I always wanted. I was always into it. So. I just pursued that and that's what I'm doing now. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, and so you are, so not from Arizona originally, but, but this, you made this home. Yeah, definitely. I love it here. It's, yeah. it, it's definitely where I want to be with my family. It's perfect for the family. Good, good. No, that, and that's, that's good. And so, so in, in that sense, um, where you went to school is where your boys are going to school. Yes. Yes, it's like I, I loved I, I love the district that I went into and I loved um, everything it stood for. I love the teachers. I and I felt more comfortable just sending them in the, to the same neighborhood that I grew up in and the same schools. I didn't feel the need to like look elsewhere. I felt very comfortable with it. Good, good. Um, so in, in that sense, are you what? what why was um besides being you know comfortable and, and liking the you know the, the school that you're at uh in your experience um what else instilled like that why, why do you value you know that that um education um access and and um the importance of it what what, what is it that instilled that in you um the educators all the teachers that i i can't i don't i don't even remember having like a teacher that really stood out that you know, push me down or anything like that. No, all my teachers were always like, do what you love, you know, and you'll never work a day in your life. And they, they, all my teachers, I remember them all saying that like throughout the years, they were always pushing us to just do what we wanted to do. It was never like stress yourself out and, you know, get, go get, you know, um, you need to go get a higher GPA. You need to do this. They always pushed us. They're like, we want you to be your best self but we also want you to do what you love to do. So like, I remember all the way up until I graduated high school, all the way, even the teachers out at Alhambra, like even there, like I had real, a good support system and everything. And um, I like that, you know, I like it when it's a public school because I feel like they know that we're coming from different backgrounds, not everybody right, right. from the same background. Some people have a little bit more, some people don't have as much. But my just growing up around the same students like that, mm -hmm. we all felt we all felt like one at that school. Like we, no one was better than anybody or anything like that. And it just like the teachers were just so awesome. Like we didn't have as many field trips as I I've seen or heard of other schools having. Like it was crazy. I wish we would have had more field trips. But I Always, remember right? having. I remember having field days like crazy, like they would make the best out of the situation. And, you know, sometimes right. public schools don't get as much funding as other other schools do. And, you know, you just got to make the most of with what you have, you know. 
Yeah, no, of course, of course. And um, what outside of uh, the school setting, which sounds like you know an, incredi an incredibly supportive system that you had, um, outside of that, was did it, was did your family value education in this way? Like, did they uh, push you to you know ensure that you met certain goals that they had set for you, or or was there an influence outside of the school setting that that um you know and instilled that value in you? Well, my my mom and my dad, both of them had. My mom only went up to sixth grade. That's her furthest education. My dad, I think it's eighth grade. And so they were field workers in California. They worked the fields over there. So when they brought me over here when I was four, they were like, okay, I need, they, we need to step out of that. And they needed to do something else. But my mom and my dad, well, my mom was always like, you know, you really got to push yourself, you know, and everything, do more than me. You don't want to be like me. Like she would always just tell me, I don't want to be like her. And I'm like, mom, you came out good. But I'm like, you're a good mom, you know? So I, more than anything, I didn't want to be at like, it wasn't the educational part that the education that I wanted to be like her, but it was more like the mom, like right. her. And I'm like, my mom was a stay at home mom. And, um, and she always said it was because, you know, she had no choice. Like, she's like, I only went to sixth grade. Like, what, how, what can I do? You know, I don't even have a diploma. Right. So I always just, you know, just kept pushing. And I was, and my mom was just like, always very supportive, always very supportive. She was like, I, pr I started uh, cutting hair on my brother when I was 14. <laughs> he was my guinea pig. My mom- Willing, gave me well, 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 yeah my, mom, this, yeah. yeah, my mom would give me 20 bucks and be like, here, go take your brother to get a haircut. I would cut it first. I'd mess it up. And then I'd take him to go get it fixed. <laughs> and we were good. But, you know, I knew that that was my passion, like in high school, like I knew hair was going to be the direction I was going to take. And I, I saw my friends going through the ACE plus program and going into different things and kudos to them. I'm like, you guys are amazing. And but my direction, I just knew my direction was a little bit different. Right, right. And I think that's so important, you know, knowing knowing that it's okay to explore, you know, and, and if you know, you know, if you have a passion, having the resources and having the support to like get there, you know, and here you are, you know, years later, a successful uh, hairstylist and you do a really good job. I'm not biased, um, <laughs> but, um, you know, thinking now, you know, all those things and this network that you had, um, and now, you know, thinking about the education that, that your boys are getting in the same district, um, would you say that that support network is equal to or better than the one that you have? I feel like it's definitely better. My, my son, who's in third grade, his teacher last year, oh, him, him and his teacher had such a good connection. And my son was every day, looks forward to going to school every day. He was just like, he couldn't wait to see his teacher. And his teacher was very smart. I love the way he, he did things because there was one, it was a group of four kids in his desk in their, in their little table. And the teacher told me, I know Eli likes to chat a lot. And he, I let him sit with his two best friends that are also very smart, but I sit all three of them together. I let them sit together, but with the one boy that's always absent. So they, all three mm. of them catch him up. So he's okay. like, all, he has help from all spots and that boy is so like thirsty to learn like he's so like you can tell that he wants to learn and he has three boys around him and all three of them are showing him and I'm like this is yeah if you guys can help him I'll let you guys sit together but I need you guys to all help each other and that's how he is he's he want and because of that he takes that everywhere else with him and he always wants to help other people right, so right. I, I love that that's good. Yeah, I know that that's 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 great, and I, I think you know that that relationship with um with the team that's you know educating your your students is so you know so important. Um, you know, full disclaimer: I don't have any kids. I have a dog that I think you know provides my own aches and pains, but it is by no means you know equivalent to uh, um you know the preparation of hopes, dreams, and everything that comes with what you want ultimately for for your kids. And so I do want to talk a little bit about some of those those things, and I, I think there's this interesting like parallel. I'm you know the son of, of migrant workers. I grew up on a dairy farm for the first 13 years of my life. Like um, my boss, and you know, Stephanie's also like you know so, like daughter of the Brasero program. So there's all these similarities of like hardworking Latinos who do break their back to just ensure that we have access to that. And it continues, you know, and, and what we haven't even 
begun talking about is this extra layer of the pandemic. Yeah. You know, and so so to to kind of go go in that direction. Um, pandemic aside, what are your hopes and dreams and aspirations for what your boys do? Um, I ever since but even before this started happening I would always tell them like I want you guys my job is to make sure that you guys are happy like I want you guys I don't want you guys to stress out about what job or you're gonna take or even um deciding on what uh like what classes you want to take in high school and stuff like that like I want you guys to take classes that you're actually interested in like there's no right. point in, in pushing yourself to take all these AP classes if you know you want to take um if you want to be you know a chef. And I told my son, I'm like, take some cooking classes. We'll cook at home. Just keep your grades up and everything, and make sure that you're good and you're set. You know, and sometimes you can just go straight to the source. And right, right. You, and and you can do be. And I teach them that being an intern isn't a bad thing. It's like they don't have to look at it like oh, I'm working, but I'm not getting paid. No, you're getting trained. You're getting free education. And that's what I try to teach them. Like I try to reroute them because especially you, I can't tell, I don't want to tell them college is away. And then we have a whole pandemic and you see kids right now and they're struggling to even get their money back for the tuition and all this stuff. And I don't want them to be stressing over something like that, but who knows what the future holds, you know? No, no, that's exactly right. But I think that there's some, some really, uh, some wisdom that I think that needs to be imparted on, on more people in what you just said there. I think that there's this approach that's one size fits all, right? That, yeah. that you know, AP classes and college is success, you know, check, check. As if that defines success for every family that exists in our communities. And I think that you and I know, we know that that's not necessarily true. And success, uh, what that means, I think, uh, is different for every parent. And I think that that's one of the, the pieces of, of why this conversation with parents is, is um, incredibly important. And us as a community facing organization, wanting to look for solutions to like bridge that gap. And the gap that exists, that, um, the, the gap that exists not because of society, like society's like standards, but because of the standards that parents set with their kids and you know, uh, like an extension of, of these hopes and dreams. And, and so now let's talk a little bit, little bit about the pandemic. Um, so uh, how did that affect your, your, um, your work life? Well, at work, we were closed for the end of March all the way to like a little mid-May. And so, and they didn't go back to school. So, I mean, like it worked out during that time. We took care of each other. I took care of them and everything. But it, at the time, me and their dad had a different schedule. We were, they were with him on my days off, period whether in my my schedule is very flexible at work but when we came back I told my boss I asked my boss if if I could just have a set schedule because I was going to have to have the kids certain days and that way we can have them more organized throughout the week even if I have right. to even even if dad has them an extra day that's fine I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page and right, right. So like I was training them like, okay, you know, these days, you know, you're with your dad, these days are with me. Once we got our supplies and our iPads and everything, it's like, here we go. And it's like, <laughs> a whole, it's like, here we go. I came back to work. I had a set schedule. And then like, so I have three days off in a row so I can be with them the second half of the week. And it's like, learn, learn, learn. And then it's just, I had to learn what they were learning and even to right, this, right. even to right now, like they come looking for me with their iPads, like, you know. You have all the I answers, right? With, so now <laughs> I, I went from being a hairstylist, now I'm a hairstylist, a teacher, a cafeteria lady, <laughs> I'm a bus driver. <laughs> <laughs> and no, um, I, I think that, that illustrates perfectly like what well, your plate was already full, like literally spilling over the sides, like yeah. pre-pandemic. Um, and now all these other things like well, what has been the most interesting um, thing that you have like come across in terms of just like um, that they expect you to like know is it like math or is it like just uh, the day-to-day um, oh math yeah. is like my weakness and that math yeah. is their dad's strength so it's oh, funny good, yeah. like I we me and their dad we joke around all the time I'm like these kids you know like when they're with him 
they can get zipped through math like real good he explains it to them when i'm doing math with them i'm like scratching my head like oh wait never mind i'm wrong Let's go back. <laughs> <laughs> and but and then but but that's like but when it comes to reading and writing oh i'm like here everything you have to break it down to per sentence you have to have your subject your adjective you have to have this start with take, yeah. take it take it one sentence at a time and then we'll right. go from there and then but with their dad dad still spells islands and and within like he pronounces islands as icelands <laughs> okay so, <laughs> so we all have our strengths like, and weaknesses right <laughs> yeah we're yin yang <laughs> no, um, so so no i mean i think that um your, your co-parenting, correct? Yeah. And so, you know, you, you take turns with, uh, depending on your work schedules, um, fitting that into the schedules that the school set out for you. Right. right? And so, so let's, let's talk a little bit about the transition from spring to summer to fall um, and your, your boys. And so they went from being in school full time to all of a sudden out and not knowing when we were going to go back. Mm-hmm. And then going to the next grade, um, what was what was the um, preparation process like for for this for this new school year? Um, I had to learn how to use an iPad because yeah. <laughs> I don't even I don't I do hair. I mean I mean the most I do is push buttons on tickets and that's it. <laughs> and so my kids, I mean, we don't even have an iPad. So when they gave me the iPads, I had to learn how to use those. I had to learn how to use all these new apps that they have, how to log them in. And I had to, all that technical stuff, the technical right. stuff. I mean, I'm used to like here, pen and paper. Look, this is how you do the math. This is how you do this. And it's easier that way, but I had to totally adjust to using the iPads and then keeping the life going on them. And right, right. You were mentioning like, uh, right, right. I mean, so what we're talking here, how, how many hours of school are they in a day? From eight to three. Eight to three. And they so have like, you know, yeah, they have like about five different classes, like five or different teachers. Uh, they have a music class and they have to use, they're using, ro- um, I think it's rock, not rock band. It's some Gra- garage, garage band. band? Garage band. Yeah, yeah. They're okay. using that. I've never even touched it on my, it's on my phone. I've never even touched yeah, it. Yeah. And now I'm like, oh my gosh, what is that? And then my son is like showing me how they use it. And I'm like, okay, I can't help you. But I mean, like you can show me and like <laughs> um, other apps too, that they're just, they use to connect with each other. The only one I recognize is Google Classrooms. <laughs> right, right. No, I, so, I, you know, and that's just your, like, that's just one kid. And mm-hmm. they're like five teachers and their schedule. Um, mm-hmm. How did you how did you adapt? Like I, I'm trying to get an understanding of like what what I would do in that, like what that learning curve is like. And does it ever feel like you are making progress with like in in or does it, is it just like trying to stay afloat? Like well, what is those are two extremes there. But like, are you how how is your like just state of like well being through all of this? Like what is what are your feelings in terms of um, you know, you're, how, how you're adapting. Oh man, like with the teachers, I have no connection with the teachers except through Class Dojo, whatever little messages they sent me, but it's not like it's like a personal one where they, where I see them when I pick them up and they're like, hey, uh, he has a flyer in his backpack and or he has missing assignments. I don't right, get right. that. I don't get any of that. So now, and then it's like every teacher is different and, I, and I'll, I'll be sitting next to him, but off the camera, and just watching what they're learning but I I mean I take it's not like I do that all day for all of them but just to get a glimpse of what they're asking for and I can and then I took away their headphones because um I wasn't even sure if they were even paying attention no more because I would pass by like my I would pass by behind them and I would see that they weren't even watching they weren't even they didn't have their camera on or nothing and I'm like oh, okay, take off your headphones. I want to make sure I hear the teacher, what she's teaching you and everything. Right. So now they, they don't, they're not even allowed to have headphones anymore. <laughs> I wonder if that's a good or bad thing. Like I think of, you know, little boys and wanting to, you know, be, be you know, sly or think you're cool. And now you have not only your teacher like on you, but your parents. Like, is that, is that, you think, you think that was like a, a dream team in the making in terms of like uh, discipline and, <laughs> 
you know, is it, are your, are they, are they adapting? Yeah, they're adapting my, um, my older one. He's just like, whatever, these are my teachers. Um, but he does, I don't even feel like, I don't think he has that kind of connection with his teacher either. He just has right. somebody putting the assignments in front of him and showing him what to do. Okay. But I feel like right now with everything being virtual, I feel like we've lost that connection. Like they've lost that yeah. connection with their teacher. Cause I mean, yeah. all the, it, it's all straight assignment, assignment, assignment. It's no like get really getting to know each other. All the teachers right. really know about them is, you know, they're great. Well, how, you know, they show their grade, like, look, I did it. Or they show yeah. their work, but that's about as far as they go with the connection. Yeah. And, um, we were talking the other day and you mentioned which i think was kind of just blew my mind um you know after the end of this day they've been you know connected a lot like plugged in all day long doing these like five classes five different you know approaches to a world none of us know um and at the end of the day they just pass out as if they've been like you know outside work <laughs> yeah. you know like tell us about that oh man they have after class like after everything is over they're just like they hop out they just close everything and they just put everything away and they're just like okay my head hurts and they just go and then you think I I you would think they're gonna play on the playstation and they'll just sit there and they'll just like look at the blank screen I'm like are you guys okay and they'll be like yeah we're just gonna take a nap and then one falls asleep on the couch one and they'll wake up like at six o'clock like they'll take a three-hour nap and they'll wake up at six o'clock and they're just like, my head just hurts so bad. And now it's like, they have, they yeah. have more headaches now. And I think it's because of the stress of doing mm -hmm. the work, being in front of a screen, yeah. being forced to just, but you know, I, I tell they, they do have um, a little bit of a little breaks in between like little recess, like they have their lunch between 1130 and 1215. So they, I let them run up and down the, the hallway, like as much as they want, they can scream all they want. Yeah. They let, they let loose. And, I, okay. and I feel like that, that wakes them up in the middle of it. And then, you yeah. know, and they just, and then that's when I become a cafeteria lady. So oh, I, yeah, I make yeah. Sure, yeah, I make sure that I, I get them something with sugar <laughs> to keep them going. Maybe, you know what, maybe they're just crashing. That's all that's happening. <laughs> no, no, don't blame yourself. <laughs> no, I, I, I just, I, I've experienced that as an adult, you know, time and time over that just like, end of a hard day and you're just like you know what I will see you tomorrow because <laughs> you know you're, you pass out but like as a kid I I just um you know can't help but to think you know is this the right approach when at the end of the day these young like not even teenagers yet yeah, kids are like just dead from dead from what they experienced and what they experienced was a regular school day yeah. you know yeah and before it was like <laughs> you know, they would just get out of school that yeah, I'd see them running down looking for me and pick them up and they're still good because they either switch classes, they're in a classroom, they're socializing, they're not in front of a screen forced to, you know, look at it. And the teacher right, right. interacts more and everything. And now I feel like it's like people working from home with your boss right over you, you know, or yeah, watching yeah. you what to do. You're forced to right. work. You can't even like look at your phone. Cause they right. can't, cause with my little one, sometimes he can't even look away. He looks away and the teacher's like, Eli, are you paying attention? And he's wow. like, yes. And he's like back in front of the camera. And it's like, poor things. They're just forced yeah. to be on a screen. Right. And yeah. so I, I want you to compare something real quick. Um, thinking last year, pre-pandemic, um, readiness, readiness as, as you define it for the next level, whether it's the next grade, um, for um, where he should, where your kids should be on a path towards being healthy, productive adults, um, and readiness is generally where they were last year, and where you um, how you feel now when you think about it uh, um, as as the school year progresses. And so the question being, um, compare like at the before the pandemic, do you feel like your your uh, kids were getting everything they needed to in the school environment to be um, on the correct pathway to be productive adults? I feel like yeah. now, now looking back at it, yeah, definitely. It's like they have, um, they can socialize. They learn how to socialize. Even when they have like little, um, 
my little one last year when he had a little uh argument with another kid he was mediated and everything they became <laughs> friends again he learned how to deal with that over here right. it's like fighting with brother you know yeah, so it's right, right. different but when you're in a school setting you have the compassion of your teacher right over you you know and everything your see your teacher sees that you're struggling or right. if you're stuck on a question or even sees if you're pondering or like looking at looking at a wall yeah you know? yeah they, they can see right there what's going on, how he's learning, you know, because sometimes, you know, just from a screen, you can't really tell. And if, if kids have learning issues or lear learning disabilities, um, you can't see them from, from a screen. You can't, that's not enough. Right, right. It's, you need the whole, you need the whole support system. And I, right. I, that's why I love the school system. And I'm, I'm excited for maybe next year or whenever they do decide to go back when it's safe, but right. I'm excited for them because I know that even now they'll appreciate it. They talk about it all the time, how much they miss school and everything. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, I miss my friends. I miss my teachers. And and they, they even say, I miss the smell of the school. And yeah. I'm like, I That's... know, right? That's like something that, you know, you're just like, wow, I never thought they would say that, you know? And they're like, right, I miss right. everything. So... Right. Hopefully, uh, I know. I, I feel like they will be ready though because they're not. They're 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 going like straight through the year with like lessons. So, um, educate like like with all the stuff that they're learning. I feel like yeah, they'll be ready. But yeah. um, the I feel like they'll also be lacking a little bit of the social part. But they're all they. I feel like they're gonna be wild when they get back. They, I feel like they're gonna be too excited to get back and I feel that's gonna be an issue <laughs> right no I'm, I'm glad I'm glad that um you know they are um you know in, in a not only you know in, in your house and being um you know seeing that support at home but also have that same you know support system. and then yeah school and they're excited to learn like that is that is what we want you know at the very very least that you know our our youth in the state have the access and resources to do whatever it is they dream um, but um, before we uh, we end our conversation here, I did. Uh, we had a, a question come in from um, from Facebook. Uh, the question is, how do they handle recess or PE? Oh, with uh, question. yeah, they have recess uh, from like their lunch recess is from twelve thirty or eleven eleven thirty to twelve fifteen, and yeah. Fortnite. They get on it with all oh, their yeah. friends. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> They're, they're okay like, okay yeah that's that's recess and it's like that's funny it's it's online still and then i'm like oh you don't get tired of that screen huh <laughs> <laughs> that's funny um that's really funny actually uh you know all of a sudden it's different um yeah. no but uh so um as you know uh, we end every segment with Pakasepas with uh two questions that we ask our panelists um and we're just making a long list of uh, the responses. And so uh, the first question is related to the game Loteria, which is uh, very popular, like Mexican bingo. Um, and the question is, um, hypothetically, if we were to update all the icons in the Loteria game, um, who would you nominate to be one of those new icons? La Maestra. <laughs> La Maestra. I love it i love it and um, i knew that was coming because we talked about it uh, I know. but it, i was so excited for you when you said it because it is so perfect for the moment and like who is that icon is it the actual teacher is it the mom slash teacher slash you know everything else like wearing all the hats um i you know all an image of what that would look like uh looks ridiculous in my head right now but is perfect for the moment i love that so much I know. Um, I so love it because I have a lot of friends who are also teachers and they're like, I respect the parents that are behind the scenes. And I'm like, I respect the teachers that are like right there tr trying to keep all these little squares from disappearing, all these little kids from disappearing. Right, right. Um, no, for sure, for sure. Um, and the second question before we let you go uh, is related to La Chancla. And so... Um, <laughs> I, I used to have a visual aid. I don't know where it is now, but um, a chancla, um, a lot of Mexican kids are familiar with. It was just a disciplinary measure that, that was used by parents um, in, in home settings. Um, our question is, if you could throw that chancla at anything right now, that can be a, you know, 
entity. It can be a feeling. It can be the weather. Uh, what would you? What would you throw a chunk at? What would you cancel right now in this moment? Oh, I don't even know. Oh, I would just the whole pandemic, all yeah, of it. Coronavirus. Like, yeah, throw that no, chunk out. Throw lots of chunk out. All of 2020. Pandemic. Throw it at 2020. <laughs> Why should? <laughs> Oh man, because I feel like we're all ready to just let's, go let's, back. Let's, all, let's all that, yeah, no, donate one of your chunk last week. <laughs> yes. For, for sure, for sure. If, if that's a thing that can even happen, you know, like there's so many, so many unknowns and so many, you know, ways to be a better, better help to, you know, our community. And so, um, Alejandra, you do more than you will ever be thanked for. I don't know how, you're incredible. Mm -hmm. And um, like I've said before, if there's ever anything we can do to help better understand um, or better support um, your hopes and dreams for, for the education that your boys are providing, please reach out. Uh, we, we're here for that. And um, I, I, as always, uh, thank you. And then um, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Was, it was nice talking to you. Thanks. I'll see you later. Okay, right, bye. Good. Hey, Steph. Hi. <laughs> that was a smooth transition. I <laughs> you never know. You Good never know. Yeah, no. Um, did you hear the Loteria piece? I loved it. I, La I did too. That is yes. such a good one. I love it's it. So good. It's so good. Um, so I wanted to um, have this conversation with you um, uh, to follow the, the parent conversation because uh, you wear, like La Nesta, you wear a ton of hats. You um, are the you know, executive director of All in Education, um, but you're also a school board member with uh, Phoenix Union. Um, and what we're trying to do is just understand the parent plight. What is it that parents are coming up against and how can we provide a solution to some of these issues? Yeah. Um, and I think that her Lutheria choice kind of illustrates like the fact that who is, who are we talking about when we say la maestra? And I think that, you know, the, the teacher, of course, rightfully, but parents who want to be more involved, who want to do, you know, what, what they can to um, ensure that those aspirations are realized. Um, yeah. How, how do you, um, what, you've been on various roundtables and panels. What are, what are the stories that you're hearing? Yeah, absolutely. So when we started, um, when I started in this role at All in Ed, it was um, April, you know, first of April. So two weeks after schools closed in the midst of the pandemic starting to hit Arizona. Um, and so we launched our effort to listen to families. We've spoken about that on, on Paque Sepas. And we heard a lot okay. from parents about just the challenges that they experienced during school closures with gaps in communication, uh, she right. mentioned it, right? Like not getting the same level of contact and communication from, from their child's teachers. Um, and certainly that was really present in our Spanish speaking community, just mm. not being um, adequately informed about uh, how to support their kids at home. And right. parents overall just being overwhelmed with being asked to be educators. She said it, right? Like being yeah. asked to be instructional assistants at home is, is overwhelming for a lot of folks. And back in the spring, I, I had my nephew up here with me um, and he's a high school student. We were, I mean, I had to go back to like YouTube videos to figure out his math with him and like, you know, try to help him. Um, I felt really cool when I figured out how to do the quadratic formula all over again. And because I'm like, no hope for me. No. It's intense. So, like, we're asking parents to do a lot, you know. Um, and kind of out of all of those conversations and engagements that we held in the spring, we believe that in this moment, parents need. Um, an opportunity to uh, be effective in the role that we're asking them. Um, and so they need, they need additional support. Right. One of the things we're really excited um, to kind of get off the ground um, and, and uh, one of the projects that we're working on here at All in Ed is the Parent Educator Academy. Right. Um, the Parent Educator Academy is um, a training program, a partnership between All in Education, Chicanos por la Causa and the New Teacher Project. 
um, where we will identify, we're partnering with, with school systems to identify parents in their communities to participate in this program uh, so that those parents can get the, um, the training. One, you know, we want to get parents job ready. The other thing right, that we right. heard is that this pandemic is, is, um, is hitting uh, parents and families in the Latino community economically as well. Um, right. So um, getting them job ready, giving them the, the, the skills that they need to kind of get back on the job market, uh, but then also preparing them, you know, we want systems to think differently about two things, family engagement and talent recruitment. Um, right. we, those are, are, have been proven to be absolutely critical in this moment. Um, the lack of diversity in the teaching workforce in Arizona, you know, 46% of the student population is Latino, only 15% right. of the workforce is Latino, and that gap in representation and who's leading classrooms has led to a gap in communication. Parents not being able to be effectively communicated with or informed about how to support their kids in this moment. Right. And so for us, it's like we, we want to work with the systems to improve engagement, improve family involvement in their kids' um, learning, but then also think differently about where we look for um, where we look for talent in in the teaching profession, and you know what does the the pipeline of of recruitment look like? Right. And really right. Um, giving communities an opportunity that typically are not afforded opportunity. We know that, right? There's right. Um, when we think about uh, uh, talent recruitment for the teaching profession in Arizona, uh, many folks quickly go to recruiting out of state, you know, and, and even out of the country. Like how, how many people can we convince to come into Arizona to come lead our classrooms rather than looking to our, the, the communities um, that need the opportunity um, to, to help us fill, fill those gaps. Right, and so right. the Parent Educator Academy will help us, uh, again, get parents job ready, but then also um, meet the educational needs of students right now. So a parent could go through our training, our academy program, um, partner up with the teacher, the, the, you know, the, their instructional lead, the teacher that they'll be working with, and become an effective team teaching, you know, um, uh, a teaching team collectively right, right. Yeah, collaboratively yeah. together um, and then the parent also helps that teacher now with communication to the families in that classroom let's say I'm a teacher um, and you're the parent and and you know I'm leading a classroom of 30 kids if you can help me with 15 and I can take 15 we can do breakout right. sessions if you can um, help me with communication if I have a gap in in language and I'm, I'm a monolingual English speaker and you're bilingual Spanish, like you can help me with that communication. Right, right, so right. Again, really looking to parents as allies in this and as partners as we navigate this school year. Um, that's the hope of the Parent Educator Academy and we're really excited to get it off the ground next month. For sure. And I think um, as, as you know, hearing Alejandra speak about her, you know, unique circumstances um, I think of the other parents that, you know, we've heard from or that um, has reached out that um, has lost their job or doesn't speak English or doesn't understand, you know, or wasn't, didn't receive their education in the U.S. You know, Alejandra, like, is there, you know, and what an opportunity for partnership between her and the school for just the communication engagement piece. Like, what an asset she would be to advocate for her kids in this way. And yeah. there are so many like her who, who are able to, um, you know, with just uh, presented the opportunity and which is why I think, you know, this program is um, exciting. Um, in terms of uh, the, you know, those gaps outside of like the communication piece and helping, um, you know, teachers with, with uh, reaching out to students, what, what other ways, um, what other skills um, can parents expect uh, to learn or, or what is it that um, you're hoping to, to see uh, from the parent participants of this program? Sure, so for us, I, I kind of bucket it into three categories now. So we, one, we wanna get parents job ready, right? So that's, that's first and foremost, get them job ready, get them back on the, on the job market, um, get them those technical skills that they need. 
And then two, we want to um, get them, get parents trained to be educators um, and, and get them the skills that they need to become instructional assistants, essentially, so that they can support their kids learning at home. Mm -hmm. And then the, lastly, we want to get parents, um, prepare parents as leaders. Again, like we, I, I, I know this, like when, when we look to our community for solutions, they come up with the best solutions to the challenges that we face. And so we want to be an organization that is empowering our community to lead. Um, and so part of this work um, and our work at All in Ed will be to be to work with the parents that are going through this program and really develop their leadership skills so that they can be um, effective advocates, not just for their own students, but for the students in their communities as well. Right. Um, is this uh, opportunity, you said it's at certain sites. So is it available across the state? What is, what is access like for, for this program? Yeah, so we will start um, in a pilot uh, format. Um, we're partnering with five different school systems. Um, in the uh, Phoenix area, um, we have uh, Phoenix Union High School District, Cesar Chavez High School, uh, Roosevelt Elementary District um, and um, Southwest um, Elementary School. Uh, uh, Vista College Prep is another one on the charter side. And then Academia de, del Pueblo is the, the second charter partner. All those in the Phoenix area. And then um, in, the, in rural Arizona, we'll, we will um, pilot and, and test this model out with Yuma Union High School District and San Luis High School. Um, so those are our, our core kind of partners to, to test this model out. Our hope is that we will learn a lot. Um, we'll learn a lot about, uh, you know, the implementation and make recommendations um, about scale for, for the program um, by okay. next summer. So this is a pilot year. Okay. What are the similarities in, in those sites? Why, why those sites? The site, so for us, um, it, we really wanted to target the communities that were being impacted by COVID. Um, and so these are our uh, zip codes that have been highly impacted, South Phoenix, um, and um, has a, a very, um, was highly impacted by, by right. COVID-19. Um, and so the, the populations um, have high concentrations of, um, uh, Latino families and uh, also high con concentrations of students on free and reduced price lunch. So okay. we know that these are communities that need access to opportunity. Um, participating in the program is at no cost to parents. Um, and actually, we are uh, providing an incentive to parents to participate um, so they can they can apply to to join the cohort. Um, our, our parent participants and our teacher participants will both be incentivized um, to, to join us in the pilot program. So, so um, you're looking at, uh, we're taking immediate needs that folks have from whether it's a skills-based need, um, an employment need, um, just you know, wanting to be more actively involved uh, with, the, with their kids' uh, schooling. Um, and the solution here is, um, Upskilling is that is that what how you're if you were to put this in one word what is uh, the solution is in this sense? Yeah. Absolutely, it is upskilling. Yeah. You know, I think for us, um, the biggest kind of lesson learned um, for not just us but for a lot of our school partners and system leaders from last spring was that the gap, the digital divide was not just about access to technology. Certainly it was about access. Mm -hmm. There's barriers to access to laptop devices, to hotspots and broadband and Wi-Fi, but it wasn't just about access. Parents that, that's, you know, we had parents on a, on a spectrum, I would say, that said, you know, I, I'm actually really grateful the school let me borrow a laptop and a hotspot, but guess what? I've never turned these devices on. Before. Right, so right. I know how to use them. My kid's still offline. We're both mm -hmm. confused now. And my family's completely overwhelmed with this. Right. And then you had parents who were like, I, I thought I was tech savvy until COVID hit. And like, I don't yeah. know. And I, I think Same. I yeah. shared some of that. And, and yeah, too, yeah. I was like, I thought I was tech savvy until right, COVID right. hit. And we have all these platforms and like right. different things to navigate. And so 
um, it wasn't, it's, it's definitely upskilling, not just for um, our parent participants, but also for the teachers, we think mm -hmm. um, in the program will benefit certainly uh, from the family engagement um, kind of a component uh, that this program will bring. So we're really excited about that. Right. And so um, online uh, folks are asking the, the total cost of, of how to participate in this program. And, and you mentioned that it's um, no cost to participants, but instead they're actually being paid in, in a sense uh, through different incentives. Um, and yes. so is that is that that's the case, right? There's no cost to participants. There is no cost to participants. We do have um, a very generous uh, funder who has who has agreed to support us in this um, in this pilot phase. Um, and so we are aggressively working as an organization to ensure that this is a, a low cost pilot um, for our, our uh, school partners and our participants and, and at no cost for our participants and actually wow. incentivizes them to, to join the pilot. Right, right. And that's quite, that's quite the combo. I think, you know, there's, there's programs out there that maybe have a few of these components, but n rarely, if not never, not to be dramatic and say that, but rarely do they have all of these components. Like why, why were the, why are all those components a priority in the sense? Well, for us, it's about creating, you know, um, our hope with the Parent Educator Academy um, and the way that I think about our role um, in the ecosystem, as far as All in Ed is concerned, we want to be an innovation catalyst and we want to create transformational change. And for us, transformational change means transforming systems into being um, more inclusive, more welcoming, creating opportunity for the communities that they're serving. And so we came up with this concept because we, um, we believe that if our communities, the communities that going into pre-pandemic already had barriers to access um, and barriers to opportunity, if we are going to change outcomes, we have to change how the system functions and how the system supports um, and invests in communities. Right. Uh, and so for us, this program is an innovation that, that focuses on meeting the needs that the community has right now. And that was mm -hmm. economic challenge. Um, and certainly parents at asking parents to serve as educators. Um, and then for us taking it a step further to empower our parents, one of the biggest um, highlights of the spring roundtables and, and community conversations that we held came out of Tucson. And uh, Dr. Trujillo, Superintendent Trujillo and I talk about this and I share just how powerful it was to be on a Zoom call with 20 to 25 Spanish speaking moms and dads who were all, they became tech assistants for each other. They became questions, checks and balances, like reinforcement support like just this amazing network and community and so for us we want to recreate that and really take that lesson learned from tucson and take it to the next level and and um and, and add the economic component that workforce development right. piece um so that we can transform a system to think about uh, these two things in a very different way family um, and community engagement Mm -hmm. um, and also, you know, like I said, talent recruitment so that we can get to a place where our, our, our schools and classrooms are led by, by folks that, that represent the communities um, that right. they're serving. So often when we talk about um, the job uh, or workforce development within the education sector, uh, it's hard to not mention the teacher shortage. Sure. And so, so what, what in terms of um, a turnaround, uh, is this is this a solution to the teacher shortage, um, short term, long term? What are your thoughts about that? Yeah, so you know the way that we kind of see this pipeline um, is that these potential parents that are put on um, are put into a pathway for a, a future career in education. Our hope is that they'll go through the academy. Um, ready uh, to, and, and having the job skills to become instructional assistants, which are paraprofessionals or classified employees. Mm -hmm. And so that could also put that, um, once they have that, if they are hired, you know, for some of the families, 
they could be going from unemployment to a paraprofessional role, right? Within the next yeah. six months or, or within the next year. And that's transformational for a lot of our families. Right, right. Um, and so giving them that um, access to opportunity that way. And then, you know, continuing to invest in them long-term so that they get to a place where they have access to um, a, a teaching certificate. Um, right. and, um, and uh, you know, uh, there are multiple pathways for that. Uh, we are in conversation with um, ASU about, um, you know, what that long-term strategy could look like. But certainly for us, again, yeah, this could be a long-term solution where we start looking um, to our community as the talent that our schools need. Right, right. I, it's hard to not think of my own upbringing, my own schooling, and all the investment that folks made in me. But, you know, what if that investment had also been made for my support network? Like mm -hmm. what a different, you know, world that would have created for just me as an individual within these communities. And so this is um, an incredible um, and exciting, uh, you know, innovation that, that um, um, you know, is, is uh, existing, that exists now and is open for people can begin applying. Yes, people can begin to apply. You will have to remind me of the link and maybe we can get it um, up uh, on put it up on our screen or in the comments on Facebook, um, but folks can apply um, online. I think it's a quick, um, you know, several question um, su survey. Uh, we do want the parents to be in the schools that we're piloting in. So if you're a parent at Chavez High School, please consider applying. If you're a parent at Southwest Elementary or Vista College, please consider applying. We're working, um, or San Luis High School, we're working with our school partners to identify parents to apply for this program as well. Um, and um, our teams, our collective teams working on the, on the project will, will work through um, that the um, application process over the next few weeks and get folks ready. Uh, and we hope to launch the Academy uh, by mid October. So we're on a really, you know, we're, we're turning things around pretty quickly. Um, given the, uh, where we are right now with um, uh, the COVID spread in the community, the safest bet, especially in the Phoenix community, is to start this in the virtual environment. So it will be online um, this semester. Um, and the trainings will be done virtually, much like this on Zoom, you know, Zoom uh, or, or meetings or what. Mm -hmm. All the, all the other tools yeah. that are available to us, um, but we will do them um, virtually for now. Um, and then really work closely with the school leaders and school partners as the, as the spring turns around um, and, and, and moves uh, forward to see kind of how that, that the program will evolve next semester. That's awesome. Um, and as I understand, there's informational is coming up and so, I know today we certainly just wanted to highlight, you know, parent experience and some, some, uh, you know, ways in which all in ed is, is looking to, to address some of these issues. Um, uh, but we will be having informationals um, in the next, uh, starting next week, actually. Yes. Um, yes. And they'll be bi bilingual. We'll have three uh, virtual informational sessions on the Parent Educator Academy. We'll make sure. Um, that, that all those details are shared on online so that interested parents um, can, can uh, join us for those, those conversations. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you so much, Stephanie. Um, so I know we, uh, did you wanna add another nomination for the Loteria or La Changua? For the, oh man. Actually, I am going to add to the Loteria Okay. I really like La Maestra. Um, and you know, every time I, I'm, um, I think I did Wonder Woman last time. You did, yep. And so I'm gonna do my other Shiro over here, um, Dolores, on, That's a good one. Um, as, a, as my second nomination. And I have a lot of, like I also was thinking Frida, cause she's all over my house too. Yeah. So I'll, there's I'll, a theme I'll, here, I'll, right? I'll keep leaking them. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Now you can make your own uh, right. with all these strong female uh, Latinas. Exactly. Um, no, thank you, Stephanie. Appreciate you as always. Um, and thank you for everybody who's tuning in. Uh, if you have any uh, questions about the Parent Educator Academy or anything that we covered today, please feel free to reach out to us via Facebook. Um, otherwise, until next time, thank you for joining us today on Pacasepas. Thanks, Danny. Bye. Bye.